Okay, so we need to make some distinctions and we need to make them now. When I say this, I'm talking about the notion of us letting in bigots and reactionaries under the big tent of like the left. And I feel as though 2020 and late, the latter of 2019, was about this sort of new phenomenon of liberals um, pretending to be leftist, sort of like de-radicalizing ex, um, now ex-chuds and reactionaries and people like that. And there was this big outrage, like there was this uproar against it because you have these people who kind of have made the left into quote unquote their safe space. I'm putting this in air quotes. And who feel as if like letting these people who haven't been rehabilitated is like, it's like a hazard, it's like a risk. And this is the thing. I've made tweets about this before. I, I talk about it constantly. When we talk about reactionaries and bigots and people like this, it isn't like, white men named Joe and Bob who live in the middle of the rural Midwest or like the South in the United States who are avid like Trump supporters who live in trailer parks. You notice how this is getting classist and really hate trans and LGBT people and black people and and Latinx people and, and people like that. People who might do harm on like their own time who go to Trump rallies and whenever we we think of like bigots and reactionaries we always think of them as white people and I think that's a huge problem there are literally bigots in your own family I'm, I'm getting to a point so stay with me <laughs> there's bigots in your own family there's reactionaries in your own family like before I moved um out of my house to live with my best friend my cousin who's a few years younger than me who's like 23 there was this moment in like the kitchen when we were both downstairs and I forgot how we got to this topic, but he was like, um, you know that the Jews are really in control of, of everything, right? I was, and then like, I remember everything stopped. Like, you know when, when you have those moments where time just sort of stops and everything moves in slow motion? That's what happened to me. And I just slowly turned my head, because I think I was doing the dishes, and I was just sort of staring at him. And I was like, holy shit, you're reactionary. He's like, no, 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 Like, I have, like, Jewish friends, and, like, we talk about it, like, all the time. About, like, you know, if you really, like, like research it, da-da-da-da-da. And I was just... I didn't, I wasn't thinking logically, and then I just started sort of accusing him of things and trying to, like, make him explain it. And my mind just sort of went into this really reactive mode when I should have at least like link them to Vosh, even though he's a fucking liberal, I know, but at least he has like good arguments to sort of like, sort of take those wires apart. I, I, I wasn't thinking, but I, I'm talking about that. You have people like that in your family. I'm not saying that like, as like, especially to people who are at risk of being kicked out and it's really like, precarious situation i'm not saying for you to like stand up to them and or or sort of like put yourself in a situation that can harm you by challenging these people i'm saying in general they're in your family and we're going to we need to get to a place where we try to sort of like convince them and sort of persuade them not to sort of necessarily go left but to sort of start dissolving their bigoted ideas and their reactionary ideas and tendencies like I said, again, let me make this distinction. I'm not saying, like, go up to your Uncle Rodney right now and then risk getting, like, um, like you're, like, getting punched in the face. <laughs> but I, I think it would probably be safer to do that with a family member, in some cases, not all, than, like, a random stranger where you don't already have that emotional connection, where they're already, where you're already, like, through the door and they might listen to you. Usually family might listen to you. They might, they may not get it. They may sort of tell you to be quiet, like, especially if it's like a POC family, you know, where you're just sort of obligated to listen to them, everything like that. Anyway, I'm sorry. Um, I didn't plan this. This is really drawn out. My point is this. We want to let those people into the left. Be well, not in the left. Let me not use that terminology. We, like everyone deserves to have a world that takes care of them and that loves them. That's what I'm saying. Everybody. And everyone can change if they're open to being changed. So I wanted to talk about this as someone who is rehabilitated because we need to make the distinction between we're going to extend our hand 
to people that need help who have trouble asking for it and who don't know to ask for it versus us sort of accepting these people and then not actively trying to change them to help them become better people. Now I'm going to talk about how I was rehabilitated, in case anyone doesn't know. Okay, so seven years ago, it was seven years ago, not several, seven, <laughs> seven, eight years ago, I was a huge abuser, super entitled, really awful. The way you see me on Twitter, how I interact with people, how I try to be balanced and how I come off with people, it, 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 was, it was night and day. I was this huge mech abuser. I was raised in a family that just sort of enabled everything I did. I had an overprotective mother who is super entitled, super childish herself. And so as a result, I didn't know how to be accountable for my own behavior and to be conscientious of other people until my 20s. So I was like that for a very long time. <laughs> I never considered the feelings of other people. It just, it just didn't occur to me. Like, I have flashbacks of terrible things I used to do to people, and it's just, I, I sort of like, like, you know when you randomly have memories in the middle of the night that you wish you didn't remember? It's like that. Like, I remember when I was in middle school, I poured some blue Gatorade on the head of this dude for no reason. I remember I, like, went to, at the time, my best friend's birthday or something, and she was, like, dating this dude, and then I just sort of slapped him for no reason. It's shit like that. It's shit like that where there is no rhyme or reason to why you do things. You're just an awful piece of shit. It was like that. Anyway, so at some point, I hit a wall <laughs> where I couldn't get away with it anymore, and the person that is now my best friend was responsible for rehabilitating me. And it was hell for her. It was, it was, it was, it was hell. Like, this is the sunken place and through the floor and into the void of hell. Basically, I hit a wall and I realized I couldn't get away with things. And then all of a sudden I started to be afraid. <laughs> it's like, it's like that feeling you get before you start being accountable for your own behavior. It's like this Kill Bill primal kind of fear. Like, oh shit, I did something wrong. Like knocking over a vase as a child. Maybe um, T-boating someone when you're like out in like your car or whatever. It's like like that, that feeling that washes over you. Like that was a very real thing for me. And then after that, like my friend over a process of three years, three, three and a half, four, started to... I don't want to say correct, but I, I have no other terminologies. I'm like just saying this to sort of like correct my behavior, meaning she had to teach me, okay, so you can't just treat people however you want. Like you live in the world with other people. Why do you treat people like they're nothing? Like, why do you treat people like they're toys or whatever? You can't do that. And so it was basically three and a half, four years of that <laughs> of, okay, so you can't just talk to this person any kind of way. Okay, so you have to be mindful that not everyone's going to think like the same as you. You need to know that you're not the center of, of the universe. The rest of the world exists. That kind of thing. And it was a very humbling process. And basically what happened is she rehabilitated me and I took those steps. And at some point I started to rehabilitate myself where I started, like I built myself this internal system to try to like run diagnostic checks of things. Okay, so like I'm saying this and the person that I'm speaking to may feel this way about it. Let me be mindful of the way I come off in my behavior and things like that. I didn't learn that <laughs> when I was a kid. There were instances where my mother and my family tried really hard to tell me, you're hurting these people around you and you need to stop and you need to say sorry, but it didn't sink in. Okay, so. I'm not going to have any friends. I'm not going to have, well, I had friends. I'm not going to have meaningful connections with people if I keep acting this way. And all of my friends that I made when I was in high school and college were all little assholes in their own time because I was an asshole myself. Moving on. So basically reactionaries, bigots, and capitalism in these harmful systems, imperialism, fascism on a macro scale was basically how I was acting. So, but you, but you can't just let a person like me into a space where people are actively trying to change and grow and do better, create a better world because all hell will break loose. Like, so when people say, I don't believe in like giving up on people, I say that myself. It means that like, yeah, 
don't give up on people, but uh, <laughs> you're gonna have to change your behavior. <laughs> you can't, like, you can't do that. You can't do that because you're literally going to harm the people that, like, you're trying to protect. And we have to do that with each other anyway. All of us have all of this fucked up, like, capitalist conditioning that makes us extremely egotistical. Like, that's why, like, my behavior was so fucking bad. I wasn't even just, like, abusive and terrible. It was also, like, within the framework of thinking I, ha I had to be, th that I was special, that I was exceptional, and all of this sort of capitalist conditioning, like, bullshit. We all have that. We all have that. <laughs> so it's not even that human beings can just be cruel. It's also with the, with also like the extra stuff thrown in where like we're incentivized through this system to just think of ourselves and think of everyone else as like competition or as someone that needs to submit to us. That's how that works. <laughs> So reactionaries, bigots, chuds, whatever you want to call them, they need to go through a process where like they're rehabilitated. It doesn't have to be something that's like a cop thing where it's like, um, cause I feel that people are going to like, like associate this with being a cop. It's not, um, being a cop is being an like authoritarian and it it's, or it's like this really rigid thing. No, every single one of us needs to rehabilitate in some kind of way because otherwise we're not going to be able to interact with each other and, and organize with each other and sort of be with each other in a community where we don't know how to be accountable like we we have to be accountable and responsible for our own behavior otherwise how in the fuck are we going to get anything done you can't just say like you can't just look at someone being raped in front of you and you you consciously know that's right like you know that it's wrong and then be like oh well this is rapist can like come in i mean they're a member of like the proletariat and like we're gonna let them in but then i'm not gonna tell them to stop being a rapist because i don't want to be a karen like what the fuck is wrong with you <laughs> no <laughs> yes everyone's a member of like the proletariat, like the worst people you can possibly imagine. Yes, they are part of the working class and people in general, regardless of who they are. Like when we get to the point where we can start like making huge moves to sort of like dismantle capitalism, we're already now, but you know what I mean? And there's millionaires, former billionaires that want to rehabilitate. We're going to have to sort of like ask ourselves if like we want to do it and, to, and how we do it in the process. So I'm saying that like, Anyone can change, but they have to want to change, and you have to actively be a participant in it. Like, you have to be an active participant in it. You can't half-ass this. Like, you can't half-ass it. Because if you're not interested in changing the behavior of people that want to do harm, that want to pose harm to other people, what that says to me <laughs> is that you're not interested in changing yourself. Like, that means that you don't want to be accountable for your own fucking behavior. That means you have an enormous fucking, like, victim complex. And it means that you don't want to, like, you don't want your own comrades, people on your own side, who, who know you, who understand you. You don't even want to listen to those people, you just want to listen to yourself. Like, you can't organize, like, you can't do anything if, if, if we're all like that. Like, you can't get shit done. I was telling my friend, I think I tweeted this, that I actually want to, like, research the Black Panthers because when that former Black Panther was like, uh, yeah, they did good work, but it was just a bunch of authoritarian assholes who couldn't agree on anything, and we just sort of had to show up, and we got told, like, what to do, and then there'd be, like, all this, like, stupid and petty, like, infighting, so it, it would sort of split into factions, and it was just a mess. When I found that out, I was like, oh, so they had capitalist conditioning too. But then again, why wouldn't they? <laughs> Where we think, oh, it's all about me. It's all about me, number one. That's capitalist conditioning. So we all have to check each other on that. Like, we're all family. We're all comrades. Like, we're trying to get out of this thing together, okay? But it's going to take work. There is external work that we have to do. But there's also internal work that we have to do. And we have to constantly do it. It isn't about being perfect. It isn't about always saying the right thing, doing the right thing. No. It just means that, like, you're willing to grow from, like, from your own mistakes. That's all, that's all it means. It means you're willing to, you know, just be a human being. Which is being flawed, being fucked up. And then it means, okay, so 
I, in order for me to move forward and sort of live the life that I want to live, I'm going to have to like make changes in my behavior and in how I sort of relate to and interact with, with other people. If like, I actually want to live a life that's worth living. That's all, that's all that is. <laughs> so no, you have to make distinctions between like, when you criticize neoliberal like ideology in the mode and POC being stupid and essentializing people and doing this thing where it's like oh like we should value reactionaries over liberal, like liberals da, 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 da. okay like yeah there's yeah yeah like I, I agree with that but it's also like okay but <laughs> when you get your uncle rodney to listen to you it means that you need to start having conversations with your uncle rodney about how trans people are actually people and they may not understand being non-binary or being trans, like they may not get it, but they're accepting of it to the point where they're not going to be weird. Where like a trans person, an, an LGBT person can be around them and they're not going to like, you know, want to hurt them. That's what I mean. <laughs> like you start having these conversations with them, start softening them up. And then, you know, you're not going to get to the place where they're super, I'm going to go to um, an, an LGBT like pride parade and da da da. Not, not everyone's going to do that and that's okay. But you at least need them to be to the point where they're tolerant of other people to where they're just not going to be a problem. That, that's all you have to do. It's not about like um, making them pure and sanitizing them. Not at all. No, we have to be able to work with each other and be around each, like each other communally as human beings. <laughs> so yeah, we all have to do shit where we have to like talk to ourselves about like our own fucked up habits and tendencies and mindsets. But we have to do that even if like we're leftists, like it doesn't matter, you know? Like we all have residual shit. Sometimes I get hit to that and my best friend is like, that sounded like really X, Y, Z, like what? And, and then I think about it and then I'm like, yeah, wait, hold on. You're right. That, that didn't sound right. Let me, let me like confront that in myself. <laughs> let me like, <laughs> like it happened recently. Um, I made some tweets about how you shouldn't like go after people's appearances because it shows sort of hidden Nazi eugenic ideas you may have. I used to do that all the time, even as a leftist, and then I never interrogated why I did that. <laughs> and then I was like, wait, Nazis would agree with what I'm saying. Hold up. <laughs> it's, it's stuff like that that you like, that you have to do. <laughs> and so like whenever I like have an epiphany or something, I like tweet about it in hopes that like maybe can help like someone else. <laughs> but yeah, like, so it's little, it's things like that that you have to like, you know, keep like actively doing, you know, you know what I mean? So yeah, like we have to make distinctions. Otherwise you get weird ass shit <laughs> where you have people that say race isn't real, but biological sex is <laughs> like shit like that. <laughs> so everyone has to be an active part. Like everyone has to actively confront their own conditioning regardless if they're a leftist regardless if they're a chud or an ex-reactionary if we're gonna work together we all have to do this work all the time <laughs> all the time all the time so that's what i wanted to say we have to make those distinctions because they are important otherwise who are we loyal to? <laughs> Do we even care about our own people? Do we even care about marginalized people being harmed? Like, do we give a shit? <laughs> Remember folks, making distinctions means that we care. Actively putting down lines in the sand about behavior and harmful mindsets that we will not accept in ourselves or in other people means that we care. It means putting in the work. It means not just saying that we really care, but in between the lines on a day-to-day -day basis, our actions don't match our words. We can't do that. If we're going to say it, we have, we have to be about it. So that's why distinctions matter. It means we care. You can't half-ass caring for people. End of.